My guest today on Bridges is Sean B. And he says that there is a need, a plan, and a purpose for every life. We'll be back in just a moment so you can meet him. I'm Monica Schmelcher, and I'm so glad that you could join us for Bridges today. My guest is Sean B. And Sean B., so good to have you on Bridges today. I'm blessed to be here. This is awesome. Yeah, we're glad to have you. So you traveled a long way. Yeah, yeah. I came down from uh, Denver, Colorado. And uh, it's actually my first time here in Tennessee. And is it? I, I fell in love with it right away. You did? Beautiful. Yeah, it's so green, and it's like... A lot of people told me it was humid, and I love that, because back home, it is dry. Ah. Dry, dry. <laughs> But it is beautiful here, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it is. You know, Sean B., I remember my first time when my husband and I were moving to this area and I just saw it and I, it was so beautiful. I just felt like I was home. Yeah. 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 That was, that was the first thing that I said. I was like, wow, this is, this is awesome. Yeah. And you know, you, you drive in, I, I was driving into the Franklin area from um, the Nashville airport and just going over hills and everything like that. I felt, I was like, okay. I'm in Jurassic Park, like, <laughs> like just green hills and trees and everything. Yes. I'm like, this is awesome. Oh. It like, didn't feel real for a second. Yeah. It was I'm, just great. So, I'm so glad that you like it. And of course, welcome to Nashville. Yeah, We're so glad you. you're here. You know, I was intrigued when I took a look at your website and I heard a little bit about your statement that you use at every ministry event, that every life, that there's a need there's a plan and a purpose. Yes. Tell me what that means to you. So the big message everywhere that I go is you did not come this far just to come this far. Mm. And uh, man, I, I just think that means so much. And when I, when I say that, I think of the story of Joseph, right? And Joseph's story has so many ups and downs. As yes. soon as he gets something rolling for him, something happens and it goes back down and then he gets something wrong and it goes back down and then someone forgets about him and, <laughs> you know, and it's just it's just thing after thing but um the heart that he had when he just faithfully served no matter where he was mm -hmm. um and then god moved him to that next position but the thing is he believed that god always had him right where he needed him yeah. to be and so when we say you did not come this far just to come this far it's referring back to that story of look it doesn't matter the up season or the down season, because we believe that God has a plan and God is positioning us for everything. Yeah. And so, you know, that just ties right in with what you said. You know, your life has a plan, it has a purpose, and it has a need. And so just like Joseph, I believe in everything that we do, it's got to be on purpose. It has to be intentional. It has to be, um, you know, it instead of just letting it happen by accident, seeing what happens, waiting for something to fall on your lap. You know, it's it's doing things on purpose because that's what God intended for right. us to do. Right. You know? Because really, Sean B., if you think about it, you know, a lot of people say, I'm waiting on the Lord. And that's biblical if you do it in a biblical way. Yes. But it, nothing good, like, just happens on its own. Right. Right, like those mountains and the hills that you were talking about, yeah. right? That didn't just happen. Mm -hmm. God spoke that. And so in our lives, and I think you said so rightly, like when I, Joseph is one of my favorite yes. Bible characters. And it's my husband's name, by the way. Oh, too. nice. Okay. <laughs> but in every season of his life, he was faithful. And he believed in the purpose of God, that that was larger than where he was. And I always think, you know, that whether a person's like on a job that maybe they just really don't like or doesn't really utilize their gifts and talents fully, we can still serve there and be faithful right? because God has a reason and he's working something in us and something through us. And that can be easy to forget. Right. That's right. You know, a, a friend of mine told me one time, you know, hey, God won't give you more than you can take care of. Mm -hmm. And you say, you know, look, look at that, you know, God won't give you more than you can handle. He said, but look at it in the sense of not handle like, oh, so much pressure, but handle like, can you take care of this? That's right. You know, and so for the times that we're up, we still have to be able to take care of what we have. You know, we still have to be able to take care of the situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. Relating back to the story of Joseph, he, he took care he of the good in his life. And then he still saw a bad season after that but he took care in that bad season as well. Yeah. 
And so I think it's important for us to, you know, just just like they say, remember to uh, praise when it's good and remember to praise when it's bad. Yeah. And um, to remember that whatever we're going through, as long as we can take it as a season of, of strengthening and a season of learning, you know, we can be learning at the highs and we can be learning at the lows and just preparing, always preparing for what God has next. That's right. That's right. And we can honor God in the highs and the lows. That's right. And I think sometimes we don't think about that just every day that any one of us get up and go to our jobs and do the right thing, every time that we're honest, when it would be easier to tell a lie and we think we could get away with <laughs> yeah. it, but like every time that we are just honest because it's the right thing to do, that brings glory to God. And I think if we can see Him in what we we might consider to be the small things of life, that's right. then He can have us take care of more. Yes, yeah. yes, that's right. It's, you know, like you said, faithful with the small, yeah. you know, and I, I truly believe that. And that's something that I've had to learn, you know, because <laughs> glorifying God is easy when you got a lot going on. True. And, you know, and on the flip side of that, sometimes you might forget to glorify God when you mm -hmm. got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. You know, when things are going really well, you might forget. But, you know, more commonly, you you call on God and you, you know, you, you ask for God when it's down, but when it's down, you don't praise Him. And then when you're up, you praise Him, but you don't call on Him. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's the trade-off. <laughs> it's the trade-off. And so the biggest thing that I try to remember is praise God and call on God yes. in the same season at the same time, no matter if your season's good or your season's yeah. bad. And that will help you remember that your life has a plan and a purpose um, because, you know, you'll know that you're not the one doing it. It's God that's, right. that's doing it for right. you. And that it's key that we see him in every season and every stage of our life. So I'm so glad that you came to Nashville this week and that you get to be here on Bridges. And I know I was introduced to you through Brian and Yolanda yes. and they manage the Denver, Colorado uh, CTN station. How did you meet them? And I understand you helped Brian with his show, Man 360. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, uh, I'm an editor for his show. <laughs> um, and that, I met Brian through uh, my family church. So I grew up in church and um, my grandfather is the pastor there. And so he knew Brian through just kind of dealings. And so I actually um, was able to uh, write and host a television show that uh, Pray Center Church, that's the church I grew up in, that they had with CTN. Wow. And so it was it was really cool. You know, mm -hmm. we, we did it for a season just to kind of see, you know, how we felt about it. It was a um, comedy kind of variety show um, called The Why. And basically it was, you know, asking the question why you know why why are we here you why know i saw the happen? show okay i didn't realize that you were involved with that okay. but i remember yeah. thinking that's a really cool name the why yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah yeah so that was that was through praise center church and okay. um that was kind of my connection to brian that's mm -hmm. how i how i met him was just dealing with him on a day-to-day -day with that show um and then when that season had ended um, you know, I talked it out with the church and I decided that I wouldn't be a part of that anymore, but I did keep my relationship with Brian and he was like, Hey man, I'm looking for an editor for my new show. I know that you work in that. Would you mm -hmm. be willing to come in and do an episode for me? So we did. And, you know, apparently he liked it <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, and, um, and you know, that's, that's, it just kind of continued yeah. from there. And, and that's another element of just, you know, being faithful with what God puts in front of you mm -hmm. because, you know, obviously my passion is music. My passion is, is um, to be a, a Christian artist, you know, mm -hmm. but the ability that God gave me to work on the video side and to work in those things, it's like, all right, God, I don't know why you gave me this. This isn't really the thing that I prayed for, mm -hmm. but just like the parable of the talents, whatever you gave me, I want to multiply it and use it. And I don't just want to bury it and sit on it because that's not the one that I wanted. That's right. You know? And so being faithful with that has opened doors to do more, even more in music. And so it's just been hand in hand and it really shows, you know, back to the point, God has a purpose for everything. You know, he does. And I think Sean, Sean B, as you tell that story about, you know, you editing one of Brian's shows and, and staying on with that, that Man 360 program is so important. It is. You know, it's the first men's program that I can recall that CTN has done. There's so little for men yeah. on Christian TV. And that's, 
that's sad, but I'm glad that he stepped up and that he did that and that you joined him and that you're helping him with that and how God uses that to also help open, open other doors for your passion, which is music. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think, I, I tell Brian it's awesome that he's that he had the vision for this mm -hmm. program because men don't like to open up. Men mm -hmm. don't like to share. Men don't like to, you know, all right, let's dig deep and, and really talk. Men don't enjoy that. But the way that he approaches it in his show mm -hmm. is so cool. And it's almost like, you know, through the interviews and through the, the segments and everything, you're opening up without realizing it. Yeah. And then he hits you with the hard stuff. Right. And it's like, okay, I see what you did there, Brian. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, so his heart, his heart behind that is just, it's so great. And I think, you know, I believe, you know, people talk about, about, um, just this revolution and this rising of the church and all of that. I believe that if that is going to happen and when that happens, it's going to be because the men are strong men of God and that they are heads down leading their family through that wall, you know? And so, I really believe in what he's doing, and I just think it's it's incredible that he had that heart and he took on that calling yeah. because it's a tough calling. Yeah, and that he's doing it, and he's there's so many fun episodes yes. and fun segments, like mm -hmm. watching uh, Brian get a pedicure. I, yeah. I find oh that gosh. hysterical. Yep. But you know, it's like yeah. someone could be flipping through the channels and they see that, and it's like, okay, yeah, like, that's funny. Yeah. I'll watch that, and that you joined him in that effort. And I think about you know by editing the program and I understand like that you did some music for it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah. So every, you know, the music that I use in there is instrumentation and mm -hmm. stuff of the music that I've done. Um, and so that's just a little perk of being able to be the editor is I get to put little Easter eggs in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's really been, I mean, it's been such a good time, you yeah. know, being able to do that. And I really feel, I really feel blessed. And for me, um, just the ability to help Brian, even if I'm not getting any kind of musical benefit out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's important to, to do that and to offer your gifts to advance other people because, you know, truthfully, Brian's done the same for me. Brian has offered what he has to advance me. Yeah. And, you know, if I don't do that back, then I'm sending that message that, hey, I'm, all, I'm here and I'm all about me right. and I'm all about my agenda mm -hmm. and this is it. And that's not what God calls us to do. Yeah. God calls us to build each other to grow alongside of each other. Yes. And so if I can help Brian grow in that area, then, I mean, that's, you know, that's a blessing to me as it well. It is, and everything good obviously comes through God first, but by our relationships with that's one right. another, and it's how we learn and grow. And what you're saying is you are embracing every opportunity, mm -hmm. knowing that music is your passion, but just trusting God, yeah. right, to work in your details. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, I believe I believe very strongly in discernment, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe that certain things come up, and when it happens, you just have that peace about it, and that's God telling you, go for it. And in a situation like that, I just had complete peace when mm -hmm. it was brought up, and just it's exciting, yeah. you know. Well, and it's it's just so key, I think, to all that God is going to have you do. We've got to take a break. I want you to stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk more to Sean B. and learn about his music. For more information on today's guest, visit the website on your screen. If you're looking for ways to grow your faith, we invite you to go to monicaschmelzer.com where you can watch Bridges interviews and Monica's teachings on demand. You'll also find free online extras that offer practical ways to live out your faith. Visit monicaschmelzer.com where you'll find hope because truth changes everything. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. You're just joining me today on Bridges. Sean B is my guest, and we're talking about the music gift that God has given him and just the things that God is doing in his life. And Sean B, we've talked a little bit about just overall kind of your, yeah. you know, philosophy and that whatever God brings your way, you're going to, you know, embrace that and use your gifts, right. whether or not 
it's necessarily music related, but mm -hmm. God did give you yes. a passion for music. So let's talk about that. Definitely. So I, um, you know, I grew up in church and it was very uh, Pentecostal church. And um, I know that um, I, I remember, and my family tells me this all the time, I always would love the choir. So it, it was back, you know, when I was young, they had a choir still. Yeah. And uh, Sister Jamal was the, <laughs> she was, she was the leader of that choir. And man, something about that choir it just got me hyped, you mm -hmm. know? And so when I'd be home at my grandma's house and stuff, you know, we're, we're playing church, you know, that would be my pretend. We would play church and I would, and I would get up and I wouldn't be the preacher, I would be Sister Jamal. That would be who oh, I would pretend to be. <laughs> that is so awesome. Yeah, and so I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be that choir, you know, yeah. leader. I was, you know, I was doing the clapping and the singing and stuff like that. And it was just hilarious because, you know, at, at such a young age, music had impacted me like that, you know, mm -hmm. in that sense. And so I just, you know, they tell me that story all the time. They give yeah. me a hard time about it. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hilarious. And so you know, from then on, it just it just kind of went. You know, when I was growing up, me uh, me and my cousin, boy bands were a big thing. Mm -hmm. In sync and Backstreet Boys and stuff. So me and my cousin were like, oh, we're we're a boy band, and like <laughs> we would you know plan our little dances and stuff, and then do it for the family. And so just like it, it always it always stuck. Like yeah. the music and the performance stuff. It it was just always a reoccurring thing. Um, so it's in you. It's, it's yeah, it was there. Yeah. I don't know why it was there. Um, you know, maybe we credit Sister Jamal for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it was just there yeah. from a really young age. Well, at least passion. she helped cultivate that yeah. seed that had been planted. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's so important. And I just think that's a really neat story. Tell me about the music that you're doing right now. So yeah, right now. So I uh, last year, actually during COVID, um, I released a EP called To Come This Far. And mm -hmm branches from that saying, we did not come this far just to come this far. And so what that was, it was a seven song EP and it was very much um, a mixture of the kind of music that I've always wanted to do. It was almost experimental, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, you know, we can get into this, we can get into this aspect in just a minute, but I had throughout my process wanting to do music, I had a lot of negative influence in my life and a lot of people over me that just, you know, shut down what I oh. wanted to do. Um, again, we can get into that in just a minute, but this, this EP that I put out was kind of, you know, getting rid of all of that, leaving that baggage, mm -hmm. um, throwing it off and saying, okay, this is who I am. This is who God made me to be. And so the first song on there, it's called I'm a do me. And it's more of a hip hop pop mm -hmm. mix. Um, very fun, very jumpy. But the message of it is like, look, God made you to be uniquely you, Yeah. you know, and so many people will come around and tell you, you need to live their way or because mm -hmm. it didn't work for them, it's not going to work for exactly. you. Exactly. Or, you know, just, just things that roll, things that roll. And when you hear it so much, you start to believe it mm -hmm. and you believe it so much to the point that you can't hear God screaming at you <laughs> saying, Hey, that's not who you are. That's not who you are. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it doesn't, that freedom doesn't come until you, until you throw that off and you yeah. put it behind you. And so with that album or with that EP, I'm sorry. Um, that was just kind of my, that was my statement of I'm throwing, yeah. I'm throwing this off. I'm getting rid of it. Yeah. And I felt so free mm -hmm. after that. And it was, you know, it came out during COVID and my plan was to hold on to it, but I just felt God saying, no, you need to put it out because I have something more for you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, that was that big just releasing phase. And so the song that we followed up with that, uh, it's called Here Tonight. And when I wrote Here Tonight, it's it's very pop, um, very like, um, you know, Christian contemporary in that line. When I wrote that song, I knew it was from God because I could not write anything else at that time. You know, I, I wrote that song. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna work on something else. I wanna put, I wanna put another project together. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get an EP ready. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do anything else. Yeah. And I just felt God saying, no, finish this song. You know, I want you, I want this to be done first. You know, here, I want you to change this part. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. Focus on this one thing for me. And the inspiration from that song um, came from the verse that says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there my presence will be with them. And so you know, what God was telling me is I want you to write this song that when you do your concerts, this is the song that you start with, because wow. I want you to invite my presence 
to be with you and to be with the audience for the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. And and so it's it was just very important. It was a strong conviction to me because it's like, okay, God, you know, you you gave me this project where I was able to kind of vent, share mm -hmm. my feelings <laughs> and leave everything behind. Yeah. And now you're telling me this next single that I write, yeah. I need to put you first and I need to glorify you. And literally God's saying, you need to put me first before anything, because this is a song I want you to start your concerts yeah. with. This is, you know, the song is going to be the first song that is really successful for you. And so I did that and I followed through with it. And, we, you know, it's just it's been a blessing since then. You know, I uh, just got the news today that we moved up into the uh, CHR, the Contemporary Hits Radio. We're on the charts at number 19 there. Wow. And so that's really Congratulations. good. Congratulations. That you. is really yeah. good. So that's, you know, that's incredible as, as an independent artist from Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a position that I really saw myself being in. And so just to see all of that yeah. coming through and the doors that have opened from sending that song places, yeah. um, it's just, it's been incredible. Mm -hmm. And so God has really followed through. You know, because I was frustrated. I'm like, God, why can't I write anything else? Why can't I think about anything <laughs> right. else? And God said, Hey, honor me. Put yeah. me first. Put me first. And yeah. and He's just He's just shown so much to me um, because of the obedience. And it, it is obedience. It's like you were obedient, and then God put you on those charts, yeah, right? right? And I think about you said that project was like a letting go, yeah. a vent session, and it's like you had been, you know squashed so to speak yeah. in so many ways and God had you shed all of that and then God built you back up That's by right. saying here's Sean B how you need yeah. to start this is what you need to do and that's a lesson for all of us that's right. whether we're an artist or not because we all everybody wants to offer their opinions and say do this do that this is what mm -hmm. you should do this is how you should look and God is saying to us all the time I'm your creator that's right. I know what I want you to do but we have to vent we have to let go and then we have to let god build us up yeah so congratulations yeah, on those charts thank you thank you so that's much that's amazing yeah. yeah and you know with that song in the recording process i had so much fun making that song mm -hmm. that that was one of the songs where i have fun making everything you know but i just enjoyed that session so thoroughly like i was you know i was jumping around in the studio and i was like okay hey let's play back let's try this right here i was just trying everything mm -hmm. and it was a blast i really you know i felt you always feel the joy of what you love to do but i yeah. in this session i felt the joy of god in the joy of what i love to do and it was just so much deeper and i'm like yes this is what it's supposed to be this is where it's supposed to be and you know that's what our obedience does you know mm. i believe and of course we're not all music artists like you but for any one of us whether it's our vocation or our family life god has a plan yeah. and if we'll be obedient to that we will experience the joy of knowing him and the joy of loving what we're doing. That, yeah, that's, that's a right. sacred place. And it only comes through obedience. It's such a powerful lesson. I know one of the other things that, that, that you say is very important to you is to be around God-minded and growth-minded people. Yes. What does that mean? Yeah, it's, man, it goes back to kind of what I mentioned earlier about just surrounding myself with not the best people, mm -hmm. you know, being under negative influences, being under people that kind of box you up a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and through all of that, I learned that if you're ever going to get anywhere, you got to be around people who, you know, who want to see that in you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's two different kinds of people, at least from the experience that I've seen, mm -hmm. is, you know, there's the people that will you know, to your face, say, yeah, you know, uh -huh. good job. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we want to see you do it. And then, you know, and then you turn around and it's, oh, he thinks this, or he, he thinks he's going to go do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the people that just genuinely say, hey, right. you know, I, I see what you're doing. Here's how, here's how I, you know, can help you out. Here's um, my encouragement towards you. Let me pray for you. And and even if it's just a matter of like, I don't have any, look, I don't have any connections you can have. I don't know anything, <laughs> yeah. but I want to pray for you. Yeah. When that prayer is sincere, you can feel that, mm -hmm. you know? And I believe that God, you know, obviously God told us that the most important commandment is, is to love, you yes. know, love, love God and yes. love others. And, you know, and he told people, this is how people are going to know that you're my disciples because of the way that you love them. And so... I want to be the person that shows that godly love to everybody that I'm around. And that means, 
hey, I see your passion. I see what you do. I want to encourage you. I want to build you up. Um, even if it has nothing to do with, you know, career paths or anything like that, just the general concept of I want to build you up as a person, that's the most important thing for us to do. And that's how we show that godly way of living. That's how we show that God is within us. And so for me, I want to be that person. And to be that person, the best that I can be, I need to be around other people that want to be that person as well, because then you're growing together. Kind of like I talked about with Brian, mm -hmm. you know, Brian's got that heart where, hey, man, I, I want to help you. I want to build you. And I had, you know, something that I could offer to build him as well. And, you know, now we're now we're doing this. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And as opposed to like, you know, you're going like this and then the other person starts to push you down. Right. We're both building up together. And, it's and just, that's it's God's awesome. plan for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're talking about, you know, it requires a decision on our part, you know, right. like I'm done being around negative people and people that say this to my face and this behind my back, because we can either waste our time with all of that That's right. or make a determination that, gosh, I'm going to use my discernment and I'm going to seek out people that are genuine. Yeah. And there are lots of genuine Christians. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there are, you know, whatever carnal Christian means, there are lots of those, but right. there are lots of genuine people who want to show the love of Christ and build people up. And what you're saying is that you came to a place in your life in ministry that you just needed to make yeah. that transition. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it became almost unhealthy. You yeah. know, my wife and I, um, we got to a point where we just felt like there is so much negativity around us. And if we're ever going to grow into the leaders, into the family, into the career, into everything that God has called us to, then we need to change, you know, we need to change our scenery. We got to yeah. be somewhere different. And it's not like, you know, I'll oh, kick those people to the curb, never talk mm -mm. to them again. Ah, mm -mm. But it's, hey, I, I still love you, but I'm gonna love you from a distance. Right. You know, right. you know, you know that I love you, mm -hmm. but I need to be away yeah. from your mentality. Right. <laughs> it's like our inner circle needs to be like-minded people. That's it. We don't want to let people really close to us or negative. We can love them from yes, a distance and we it. do. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is you reach that moment of this inner circle yeah. needs to be mm -hmm. God honoring and growth minded. Absolutely. I'm so sorry. We are out of time. Oh my, gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how that happened, but thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you and have you come today. Oh, it was a blessing to be here. Thank you. Thanks for watching Bridges. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on Bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org It takes training, it takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith, and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event.